welcome to another Blender tutorial where I will show you a step-by-step -step guide on how to create a lake in Blender using a few very easy steps. If you enjoy this content and want to see more, please leave a like and a comment and subscribe to our channel. You can also follow me on Instagram as well, link in the description below. We start off by deleting all the elements in the scene and adding a simple plane to our scene. Let's add a multi-resolution modifier on our plane so that we can sculpt it very quickly into a rough lake basin. Switch over to sculpt mode and use a draw brush set to subtract. Play with different brushes on subtraction until you get the shape that you would like. Remember this is just a rough sculpt of a lake so that we can get things going. Once the sculpt is done, let's add another plane that will serve as our water. We want to increase the size of the lake basin to about 150 meters. But make sure you scale it out of object mode so that it retains the original shape that you sculpted. Now add an ocean modifier to the plane we created earlier. This will be our lake. Play with the spatial side of the ocean until it reaches the size you need. If you press the space bar right now, this will allow the animation playback to show our lake moving. But we first need to keyframe the time setting on the ocean modifier. The scale setting also plays an important role in the movement of our body of water. Go to the first frame on our timeline and keyframe the time settings by pressing I on the, on the keyboard to input the keyframe. Move the timeline at the end and change the time setting to a number that suits your needs and press I again. We can now see the waves moving when we play the animation. For a lake, we need the scale of the waves to be quite small. Let's create a new viewport so that we can play with the material nodes for our water and ground. Add a new material for the lake and call it ocean or whatever you want. Decrease the roughness of the material to a very small number. It really depends on how reflective you want the surface to be. I like to turn the metallic value all the way to the max. Change the blend mode to alpha hashed as this will help us further down the line. Let's put an HDRI into our scene for better reflections for our lake. I like to get my HDRIs from HDRI Heaven. I'm sure a lot of you guys are getting them from there as well. I will take an HDRI with a balance light on it so that we can get some simple reflections going on. I will show you my HDRI setup for light and strength. Let's move in Substance Painter for a bit and import any of the two planes that we created in Blender. Export the plane as an FBX format and make sure you select the option selected objects. And in the Geometry submenu you must deselect Apply Modifiers. Bring the plane in Substance Painter and add in a fill layer. You don't have to use Substance Painter for this, but I like to get quick and easy to use textures. Change the fill layer color to a green tint and ensure that in your shader editor you have selected the shader type as alpha blending. After doing this, we can add an opacity map. 
the black mask and then the generator on it and change the generator to dripping rust. Change the settings on the generator to get big gaps between the particles. We will use this as a most surface on our lake. Make sure to activate the opacity map and play around with the slider. To get the fill layer to disappear and only have the most remaining, play with the rust spreading slider to get that effect. Export the texture when you're done. You can see my blender settings for the export in this video. Let's also add a grave texture for our ground so that we don't have to use Substance Painter again. In the shader editor, start adding the textures as image textures and can connect them to each slot like I do. We will finalize the texture setup later in the video. Make sure that every texture apart from the base color is set to non-color data. It's time to add some color to our lake, but nothing too visible as most of the colors of the lake comes from what it ref reflects from the surrounding environment. I will add principal shaders and connect them to a mixed shader. I will change the colors of each of them slightly to what effect I want to achieve. The mixed shader can then be connected to another mixed shader alongside our most texture. We need to now add a musgrave texture to our water bumps which will make this more realistic. The texture can be connected to a bump map in the high channel which we can plug in our normal slot. Play with the scale and other settings for various effects. We will create a second bump node on the other principal node so that we can have various sizes of surface bump. The mixed shader will di dictate where that bump will show up. We can now activate our foam setting in the ocean modifier. In the data layer, you can type something like foam underline. To get the shader editor to read this data, we must add an attribute node and connect the color node to FAC node on our mix shader. Add the texture setup to the ground plane. We use the same setup and place the textures we created earlier. Play around with the alphas and the scale of our bumps to achieve a more convincing texture.
If we go into texture plane mode, we can add a new texture that we can use as a mask for where the bumps are being blended with each other and in what areas they appear. Ensure the mask, the mask texture you have created doesn't get automatically connected to one of the principal shaders as it tends to do that quite often. Instead, plug it in the mix shader between the two bump textures. You can only properly texture it if you switch to shaded or render mode. We can also change the settings on the scale and spatial size for a better behavior of our leg movement and appearance. Add the sunlight as well for more control of our colors and environment. Add another principal shader so that we can add a colorless texture around the rim of our leg so we can see through the bottom. This will allow us a bit more control on the realism of the water shader. One thing we'll notice is that our bump texture isn't properly dispersing on our water. We can fix this by increasing the foam coverage of our ocean. Start blending the textures together by changing our brush texture to a cloud texture. This should be done based on your preference and what you see on the screen. I would also advise playing around with our HDRI maps as well if you don't like the effect you are getting.
to fly around our scene that I've done with the camera. This is just a very simple way to present the scene. I do hope you guys enjoy my video and learned something new. Please leave a like and subscribe to our channel for more content. You can also follow me on my Instagram page if you want. Thank you for watching and have a great day.